Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestark hier. In this video, I'm going to guide you through a 15-minute kettlebell workout for absolute beginners. But before we get started, I have a gift for you. 30 days filled with kettlebell workouts for free. Check the first link in the description. So my friends, let's get started. Guys, you use a 12 kg kettlebell. Girls, use an 8 kg. Whenever you are ready, we're going to start with a deadlift. Shoulder with stance over the kettlebell for two minutes. Ready? Let's go. Hinge, grab the kettlebell, stand up, fully extend the hips. Listen to my breathing pattern. I exhale at the top. And I exhale at the bottom. As you push your hips back, think about you have an imaginary wall behind you and you want to touch that wall with your hips and keep that spine straight. One minute and 10 seconds to go. One more and drop the weight. Now we walk around a little bit. Maybe you feel some tension in your lower back already. Take it easy, step by step. Breathe, shake it off, and we start again. Two, one, let's go. Make sure that the kettlebell drops right between your legs. Think about Dropping the kettlebell alongside your legs, not in front of you. They want to be right alongside the middle of your feet when I look down. Don't forget the breathing. Stay focused. Look down at the bottom of the deadlift and up to the horizon. Couple of more seconds. And now bring the kettlebell half a meter in front of you. Now we engage into the thumb grip. I swing the kettlebell between my legs, bring it upwards, insert my thumbs inside the window of the kettlebell, grab the kettlebell with my fingers. The handle is close to my chest, elbows close to my body. Double handed press. We want to go a little bit slower. This exercise is a little bit harder than the deadlift because now we use smaller muscles, the shoulder, upper body, whereas before in the deadlift, we were using the strongest muscles of our body, which are located right around the hips. Listen to the breathing pattern. I breathe out at the top and I exhale at the bottom. Keep the elbows always close to the body. One more rep. Now drop the kettlebell safely in a deadlift fashion and shake it off. Breathe, breathe a couple of more seconds. And now we try this again. Kettlebell's half a meter in front of me. I swing it between my legs, insert my thumbs inside the window of the kettlebell into the thumb grip, elbows close to the body. Handle makes contact with my chest. Press the kettlebell overhead. Make sure the kettlebell doesn't drop like this. This is not comfortable for your thumbs. Always keep that kettlebell in that neutral position. And as you can see, I'm tilting my neck back. I don't have it like this because I want to move my chin away from the handle. I don't want them to make contact. A couple of more seconds. One more. And now we drop the kettlebell. And now we engage into a back squat of the first minutes of these two minutes. Push the hips back, upper body knees forward, extend your arms, hold that bottom position, and come up. Push the hips back, extend your arms in front, and back up. What I like to do is inhale as I go down to the bottom 
and exhale when I reach the top position. Try to inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Push the hips as far back as you can, push the knees out so we can get as much leg mass to work. And now we want to make it a little bit harder. Shake it off. Now we engage into a goblet squat. Now things change a little bit. Grab the kettlebell, grab it by the belt itself so that the handle points towards the floor, chest close to your body. Same position, but now I don't push the hips back too far. I push the knees out and my upper body stays as upright as possible. If you remember from the previous exercise, the hips was going back, upper body was going forward. This is what we will call or classify as a back squat. And now we have a goblet squat where the weight is in front. So the biomechanics of the squat changes a little bit. Keep note, chest stays up, push the knees out. Breathe in, same procedure. Up. Couple more seconds. And drop the kettlebell. Grab it by the handle, back down. Boom. Now shake it off. Walk around a little bit. We have one minute of rest. Hydrate if you need to. And keep walking, don't stand still. And keep breathing. It's always a good thing when we are working out to not just stand there, but just to keep moving. Now we have 25 seconds on the clock for our rest. And now with round number two, we are switching up the exercises a little bit. What we're going to do now is a hand-to-hand -hand deadlift. Remember in the first round, we were using both hands. Now we do hand-to-hand. Shoulder with stance over the kettlebell, hinging, back stays straight, one hand. Ready? Yes. Switch hands. And your leading hand, keep it close to the body. What I like to do is always curl my forearm up. And it's the same procedure. Think about pushing the hips back. You need to feel some tension right here in your rear legs and that back or the spine to be more exact has to be straight. While we move forward into this horizontal position, we still want to keep a straight spine. A couple of more reps. Remember the breathing. Last one. Now relax a little bit. Walk around. Again, if you feel it in your lower back, this is normal. We always feel it in the weakest link of the chain. Now let's get back to it. If you feel your back has taken too much of the heat right now, then relax. And if you're ready, let's go. Think about the breathing. Remember, when you train with kettlebells, it's supposed to sound like a symphony of breathing. And we have 10 seconds to go. And drop the weight. Now it's gonna be a single handed press. So I clean the weight up like this. Watch. Back swing, hold the kettlebell, insert your hand inside the window of the kettlebell, elbow close to the body. Now, Press it overhead. I always want to form a straight line between my wrist and my elbow joint. Not like this. This is not good. Think about pushing up in a straight line. 
Once you reach the top position, depress your shoulder blades. This means push the shoulders down. Sounds a little bit confusing, right? Well, I'm going up, but it's actually creating stability for the shoulder means really drilling the upper arm inside your shoulder blade. Create stability and safety. One more. Now drop the kettlebell. Shake it off. Switch sides. Clean. Grab the bell by the bell itself with your uh, other hand. Elbow close to the body. Let's go. Your free hand can just rest right up here. Think about that straight line. And now you're feeling the effects of unilateral training where one side has to work and the other side has to be quiet. And if you feel that, hey coach, my left side is way better or vice versa, way worse than the other side, this is normal. Human beings have some form of these imbalances and that's totally fine. You want to work both sides to the max. One more. And now drop the kettlebell. Now we finalize the workout with a hand-to-hand -hand swing. Shoulder with stance, hips back. Kettlebell's a little bit in front of me. Now for 30 seconds, we're going to swing. When the kettlebell reaches the top position, this is where we're switching hands. And it's all about the hips. Think about this cue. The hips lead, the arm heaves. I don't lead the kettlebell with my arms. Breathe in and breathe out. Couple more. Drop the kettlebell, park it. And walk around and breathe. Shake it off. And now we want to challenge ourselves for the remaining minute of this workout. One minute of the hand-to-hand -hand swing, we want to push through. Drop it if you have to. Challenge yourself if you can. Let's go. You maybe can hear this. I inhale through the nose as the kettlebell lands between my legs. I exhale through the mouth. Once I reach the top position. One final cue. Think about stabbing your feet into the floor once you reach the top position. Especially your heels and your midfoot. This activates your hips or your glutes to be more exact. 15 seconds on the clock. Ten seconds on the clock. Park the pedal, kettlebell. The pedal kettle. <laughs> awesome. You did it. Now, as a cool down, we walk around a little bit. We shake it off. If you have a small room or a small flat that you live in, this is enough of space that you need. Just walk around a little, shake it off. Nice. And now we're gonna engage into the cool down. Simple stuff. What we're doing, go down on the floor. And as you lay on the floor, you wanna touch the floor with your toes. Hands are at chest level, close to your body. And now, if you have enough strength, raise your full body off the floor, but not too much. And now extend your arms and look towards the ceiling. Now, put the knees down on the floor. Hips go up to the ceiling. Extend your arms towards you. And now, bring your whole body, your upper body down to the floor. And as you reach the bottom position, you can place your head on your left or your right cheek to increase the stretch. We do this again. Up. 
Now knees down, hips up. Extend both of your arms, chest down. Last cool down move. Sit on your hips, on your butt. Bring both of your feet together. Now hold your feet. Now we don't have to pull. We only want gravity to set in, so this is enough. Lean forward. And now we do the other side. Extend both of your legs at your sides. Heels make contact with the floor. Both of your hands make contact with the floor behind you. Now lift your whole body off the floor. Push the chest up and let your head hang. You should feel some tension in your arms, chest and neck. Three, two, one. And you got it. Dismissed. Here's the next thing that you have to do, like the video, consider subscribing, share with a friend, and then consider becoming a Leberstock member if you made it this far. You can get started for only $1. And listen, most people struggle with consistency and accountability. That's what we're giving you with exclusive content, exclusive challenges, live workouts between you and me where I can teach you how to do stuff where I program workouts exclusively for you. That's the good stuff. So get started right now, click the link, and I'll see you on the other side of the program.